Well, hello again. In this example, you will learn how to take the internal moments found from the moment distribution method and use those to be able to generate shear and moment diagrams for a beam. We're going to take a look at this particular beam. The moment distribution method has already happened, and we have been given the final moments. You'll recognize that each joint is in balance, so that's how we know that those are the final moments there. The values that are given have been given in the sign convention for moment distribution, which is that clockwise moment is equal to a positive. Eventually, to generate shear and moment diagrams, you need to have things in beam sign convention, which is a quick review. It says that if a shear causes a clockwise rotation of a member, that's positive. And as the arrows point to the top for moment, that is a positive moment. And this is done by breaking the beam up into the individual elements, A, B, B, C, and C, D. And then one by one, we will translate the moments from the table on to the free body diagrams. So for member A, B, I see it's negative 402.88 and 127.30. The signs on these are to be interpreted with this particular arrow. So I get 402.88 and 127.30. One thing you're going to notice is I do not carry over the actual signs. I'm not indicating anything as negative or positive because that will simply confuse us in the end. I'm using the sign coming out of the table to tell me which direction to sketch the arrows. Let's look at member BC. Negative 127.30 and 300. So negative 127, 30, and 300. And to finish that up, let's look at CD right here. Give me 300 there. The next thing I need to do is sketch onto my free body diagrams my unknown shears. And when I sketch these, I'm going to assume the positive direction for shear. And that way the signs will work out just nicely as I sketch my shear diagrams. Here's VB, VC, and VC. Let's be clear here that this VC is not going to be the same as that VC because they are on either side of a support. Really, if we want to be technically correct, you would want to call this VC to the left of the joint, VC to the right of the joint. Okay, so keep that in mind. And I will come back here to member AB. And I'm going to solve for those unknown shears. I'm going to sum moments about A, and that will tell me what VB is. If I do that, it computes out to be negative 30.81 kips. Then I can sum forces in the Y. And that will then solve for the value of shear at A, which computes out to be 59.19. In a like fashion, I'll sum moments about point B, and that will give me the shear at C. And then I will sum forces in the Y direction, and that will give me VB. Let's go ahead and write those quantities in, 15.36. And this will compute out to be negative 32.64 kips. Finally, if I sum forces in the y direction, I can get Vc for this. And that works out to be a positive 20 kips. That really is the crux of the entire problem, is getting these free body diagrams complete and using the correct sign convention, which is that beam sign convention. From here on out, the generation of shear and moment diagrams is as you have previously learned. I guess the only other piece of advice I would have is just plot the shear and moment diagrams for each one of these segments individually. So that's what I'm going to do here. We'll start by plotting the shear diagram for member AB. I'm not going to go through all the rules for this. Expect that you understand those well enough by now. But we got 59.2 at this end. We've got negative 30.8 at this end. And if you follow the process, you'll find that your shear diagram will look something like this. 
where this value is negative 0 0.8. We would need to have the areas to be able to generate our moment diagram. And then I want you to look back here because we're going to sketch the moment diagram next. So you've got that 402 and the 127 at each end. I'm going to sketch that in here. All right, that is 403 and negative 127. And then following the rules, I can get the rest of the moment diagram to look like this. This is 189, 181, and all these are first order curves. Go back and do the next member. Look at what the shears are on each end, 15.36, negative 32.64. So let's get those sketched. Here's that 15.4, negative 32.6. Because it's got a distributed load, be triangular like this. And the dimension, 6.42 feet. 13.6 feet, and then we will get the areas associated with that. Let me get that point of zero shear projected down. We will get the moments, negative 127, negative 300, and then we can follow that process to go ahead and get the rest of the values. This one actually works out to be negative 77.7, .7, and it will be a second order curve that comes down like this. Now we're ready to do the last member. That's this one right here. And that shear works out to be a positive 20. Comes out here to a positive 20. That area is equal to 300. So as we come down to the moment diagram, we know it should finish out at 0. It goes from negative 300 up to 0. That's a linear line because my shear diagram is constant up there. I'm just going to go ahead and finish out by labeling this second order, first order, and then all these are first order there. So the idea that you want to take away from this is sketch the shear moment diagrams for each of the segments individually because then it's very clear in your mind about the process. And in the end, what you will have is an entire shear and moment diagram for the total beam. That concludes this example. As always, it's an absolutely beautiful day for studying structure.